and our healthy balance, healthy balance, and healthy loneliness to them and then rules and function. We were as one of the original healthy loneliness to set up by the new opportunity funding. Um, and we're still going strong. We've got lots of different projects. Um, and basically we are working from the cradle to the grave. We've got a different project for all the different age groups and different health um, issues as well. So, but the one I'm going to talk about today um, and look at to co-production is called Grassroots. It's an infant and maternal health project. Um, and it's not in the notes. I'm going to give you a bit of background on it because I think that's really important because I think that's a good bit of co-production at the very start when we're kind of ahead of our time. A um, couple of years back, um, basically we, we were in a fortunate position where we were offered some funding for every year's um, intervention in the rural, rural area. Um, and we said, well, thank you very much for taking money. Um, but we'll not decide what's going to go on. We're going to go in and, and speak to the communities um, and find out what they want to do. And that's kind of always our thought anyway, is to go find out what is needed and then work along the uh, side of the community to develop and um, but what we did was slightly different this time was we actually we already had volunteers on board in the project so we asked if there was any interest in particular in the internal health area and they would be willing to help us with these consultation events. We held like, 10 consultation events um, throughout rural South America, which is a vast area um, and basically the volunteers were trained in, in participatory appraisal so that they had the tools to go out and engage and, and consult with, with the communities. But that's where um, it worked out really well because the volunteers brought back people that we'd never seen in our project and we've been particularly good at getting to the most vulnerable and needy families and, and people in our area. But this was like it was just people we'd never met before so it was really good. Um, and I think it was because they were chapping in the neighbours' doors and bringing different people out. And also the volunteers had totally um, engaged with the project. It was their project, it wasn't Healthy Valleys, it wasn't funders, it was theirs. So they wanted this to work, so they really wanted the local people to come along. The kind of outcomes from that was, um, one of the biggest issues was families, there was a distrust between statutory agencies. Another issue was transport. Um, and what people were saying is actually the families were saying we didn't have basic skills coming away from you know, our pregnancy and once having the baby they, they, felt they, they weren't sure to ask people, they were scared to ask people um, and they didn't have some basic skills and they really wanted a kind of neighbourly kind of um, project to be set up so they wanted a bit of support to go to have hospital appointments, midwife appointments appointments that were quite daunting to them if they were on their own teenage pregnancies and such um, so and also there was obviously the sort of normal parenting skills that were coming out from it as well. So what we um, what we created was a one-to-one -one intensive parental support program and a family education support program. And we want to yeah, I should talk about that. The the one-to-one -one support program. What we do is we we train volunteers and then they basically are matched with a with a family, with a whole family who's been referred to us. They will support them to go to their healthcare appointments, which we want that as well. They'll take them to the, similar to what we were talking about earlier, is going to like the baby and toddlers groups, things that are going on in their own community, um, as well as the things that they never didn't know about that are being provided by other agencies and such. It's very much about networking. It's about that support, um, kind of holding somebody's hand to go to somewhere for the first couple of times, building up their confidence and self esteem to attend. And we're definitely not a crutch, so we definitely is about getting skills right and, and, and so that we can move away and the families are more independent themselves. The Family Education Support Programme is a various parenting skills programme, so you know, so it comes to we have baby massage, we have um, parents um, managing children's behaviour, we have healthy women, we have cooking skills. Um, and um, as you said, these are all dependent on what the families are saying they need. So it's, it's, it, we, we build on demand. That's kind of the background and that wasn't even part of the script. So I'm now kind of going to stick to the script um, to make sure that I get all the information because there's a lot and we've got a very short time. So the purpose of the project, we're now, we did a pilot programme which I just spoke about um, in more detail of how it's progressed afterwards. 
um, we're now funded by the Big Lottery, um, so it's been recognised as a really good programme. Um, you know, we've been asked nationally to different conferences to go and speak. Um, so Harry Burns actually mentioned grassroots and how it was, you know, the asset based and, and how co-production is all fitting right in perfectly. So it's getting really good recognition. It's good recognition from back to the families. I think the difficulties is the families would like to stay with us forever and be part of the programme forever, but we're definitely clear that that's not what we're about. We're definitely about um, empowering families to become much more confident and, and to you know to go along that road and then move on themselves basically and then the sort of gold star would be if they actually become a volunteer with us and then they start to give back so it's that cycle. So the comes of the project, the lottery of the that we have and we're working to just now that uh, parents and carers are better able to cope with the arrival and the aftercare of their child. Vulnerable families with children under five will become more confident and capable of parents and carers. And the final one is vulnerable families will improve relationships both within the family unit and also with the local community and statutory agencies. So that's kind of the overall what we're trying to do. Um, and it's all obviously about healthy living issues, so it is it's all about health benefits. But we, we realise having health you have to have all the community connections and feel, feel part of something. Um, we've got one development working, one project worker, um, and it's definitely an asset based approach. You know, the volunteers are, are, are definitely the people on the cold base there. The, um, they're working with the families, they're working out a, a plan and some structure with the families, they're supporting them. Most of our volunteers have been referred to us a number of years ago and have for, for different reasons um, and had different support and they're now giving back um, and so they actually understand the community much better than anybody. They understand the issues um, and, and the, the problems that, that people face in these rural communities. Um, isolation, transport and such, so they understand the barriers um, and have overcome them themselves. Um, so it's essential that we basically support and train um, the volunteers. The volunteers have a vast amount of training they go on. Um, there's obviously the sort of basic the boundaries, confidentiality and such, um, and then they, they specialise in different areas. So they might do the meaning, they might do the cooking skills, do food hygiene, practical cooking courses and such, so that then they're able to, to pass on these skills. Um, yeah, and it is a sort of about sharing the power, really, um, throughout the whole project. I've mentioned the Intensive Parental Support Programme and Family Education, um, and, and people are treated as individuals, you know, so the project is really flexible, it's, it's, not, it's not like the sort of square we were talking about, it's sort of fluctuates and changes depending on the referrals and, and what's, what's required. I mentioned the cover of Rural South Lanarkshire. <coughs> um, yeah, I mentioned the parental support programme, the individual. Um, that's when one to one buddy takes place. It's really important that, um, you know, that, that people trust the volunteers. The volunteers are very clear that they are not the professionals, they, they are not the experts in the different areas, but they are definitely brilliant at networking and being able to signpost um, and also about encouraging people to, to share any concerns. So if they're working with uh, a vulnerable pregnant woman and they're driving her to a healthcare appointment, they're able to encourage them if they've got any concerns to actually share that with the healthcare professional and see what their concerns are. Because um, we, we found in, in consultation that people are scared, you know, to, to raise a concern, ask a question because they, they see the media and they see the sort of worst case scenarios going on, and they're scared to actually sort of say a basic parenting question. In case then people are going to judge them and question that, so we're about just encouraging them to say, no, the, the healthcare professionals are here to help and support you, and they can give you the answers. So don't be scared to ask. Um, the actual, obviously in the rural area, transport is a huge issue you know, for some of the families that have to take three different buses to get to the local hospital. Um, so the volunteer will go, chat the door, pick them up, take them. So it's not, and I don't want that to sound like a taxi service because it's anything but that's the type of they can really get to know the family and actually 
find out more about them, what their issues are, um, if they've got any questions, queries and such, and really build up a, a trust and relationship with them. Um, so that's the, the um, Family Education Support Programme. I've mentioned more already got the I think it's anything like this. For my way, which is stress management, we do first day. We've got what is important, I should mention, is we've got a peer support program. When we did the pilot, we didn't really bring um, the, the families together very often. They were sort of doing their own individual you know, um, programs. So, so somebody might need more um, courses on health eating if, that, if that's an issue for them and their family. Other families might be going to the stress management. So they weren't all families weren't coming together. We did when we did the evaluation then but with a short program, um, pilot program, then the families come together for the first time. I mean it was just like a real chatter and networking, phone, you know, phone numbers being exchanged, you know, telling each other about different things that were going on in the community and such. And it was just really good. We thought we have to keep this going, we have to keep the peer support part of it going. Um, so that continues today, we meet monthly, um, and as well as there's more group work for it as actually pulling all the families together as well. Um, and obviously the peer support, they're deciding what is their priorities for the whole programme, um, as well as that you know, social connection and such, um, and then they're able to feed that into their ZAM. Um, the Ashwood Steering Group, and it's got the, the different agencies on, on that steering group, it's also got representation from the volunteers. And I've kind of realised today that although we've been kind of working, we're already kind of on the co-production uh, line, we're, we're missing the actual families on that steering group. So but we're getting their, their, their feedback through the volunteers, but that's not good enough. I've decided we need to make sure that the actual families are well represented in that group as well. So we're, we're, we're constantly learning um, and moving forward. So we've got the, the steering group. Um, we have all regular volunteer meetings as well. So the volunteers come together, share issues, what's going on for their families. At the last one, it came really apart, but the volunteers are really precious about their families. So it was really, it was really good to see the passion that they had. And, and, and um, it was kind of my family's doing this, and they're progressing onto this, and doing this now, and then another volunteer, and so on. The same, oh, my family's doing this and this. And it's just kind of like a sort of Boasting as, as such, but it was really good because it's all good work that's going on. Um, what's crucial as well is obviously we are working with statutory and voluntary um, agencies as well to make this a success. So we're working with Integrated Children's Services, com Community Midwives, Public Health, and Social Work, Leisure, Stop Smoking Service, Sub Dismiss Use Team, Women's Aid, Community Living, you name it, we're all working together. So everybody's kind of linked in. I'm going to speak briefly about the referral process. The majority of referrals are coming from um, to midwives and social work integrated children's services. We do promote that families um, that can self-refer. We definitely, you know, volunteers are out there in the community, so they know maybe a family who's vulnerable and needing a bit of support. So who best to sort of sort of send those to mentors? Um, so um, we've, we've got that, but we do have a referral form. And then once we meet the, um, once we engage a family, which is, was mentioned in another um, workshop, you know, somebody asked, you know, is it easy to, to engage with families? Absolutely not. We have to chat doors, we have to, lots of texts, lots of phone calls, um, and then sometimes we have to go back to the referral agencies to come with them to encourage them to engage with us. But once we actually capture the families, they totally engage and I think it is because they buy into the, the volunteers are there, not because they have to, they're not talking down to them, they're talking at their level and, and the, the experience as well and I think that just, you know, I know that I've got a volunteer just now, I'm not actually leading this project, <laughs> but one of the volunteers in other projects had, had got in, um, she was doing a healthy eating programme for grassroots families and she got a card from the law just saying, what they got from and it was just a bank card and she's you know I've spoken to a couple of people and they're all saying Elizabeth got this and how fantastic was so it's a real you know it's really good to get that feedback and the, the clients really value the volunteers in the um, what happens then is the development worker will meet with the families and she might meet with them a couple of times um, and they'll sort of do an action plan so it's very individualised 
um, and they'll work out what parenting skills or what confidence or what is the barriers to help them move on. Um, and we do that through an outcome star. Um, and so basically the, the individual will decide and the family will decide what's their priorities. And the development worker will obviously offer them suggestions and options. It's definitely the family that decides what they're going to be doing. Have I mentioned the referred to No. Uh, families we're working with um, are referred either through substance issues, domestic violence, poor mental health, homelessness, teenage pregnancies, um, and weight issues as well. We're working with a lot of families who are at risk um, and are connected to child protection issues. Families who are isolated and have no family or support networks um, and get more referrals. Initially, the project was set up to work with um, families who were about to have a baby and at the early stage so that we could work on the parenting skills and such. And we're now open to up until the child's age, age five, so we're now getting more referrals after the pregnancy, which makes a depression and such, um, and families being unable to cope for baby and toddlers. However, I have to say, that the referrals and families come with not one issue alone, it's like you get it's, um, it's multiple chaotic issues. We work, we do a family impact star, um, a small picture of it there. So it's quite a vision. Um, and by the time right, at the earliest stage, I have to say, we, we sit with the family and the main topics are self-esteem and confidence, parenting skills, mental health and emotional well-being ability to cope under pressure, control and decision making, relationships with statutory agencies, social networks and family relationships and community engagement and participation. So they're just the headings. So you know once we start to work with the family we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll break all of that down and work out what that family needs under these headings. And some families will need areas and some others will. So it's quite visual because the family tends to be we start starts 1 to 10 and the 10's at the end and the families can see they're starting at sort of ones and twos and threes, we make it small, we can draw where we start and then we come back six months later and they're doing it again, we're evaluating how, how, how they've grown and, and what skills they've gained and how they're feeling their confidence and such. We draw it again and they've maybe moved up a couple of notches and so you get to see the start. It's a really visual tool for the families. Yeah, what's the kind of difference we're making? Um, huge difference for um, improvements in self-confidence um, and people are actually attending appointments that they were before. To give you an example, the first referral that we received was a young girl and she was, into her she was in her second pregnancy. Her first, first pregnancy had been pretty chaotic. She had engaged with strategy services. The health visitors were pulling their hair out of her, never attended any of their appointments. They go to scans and such. Um, and the pregnancy, um, when she, she went, she had an early, um, the baby was born early and a, a low birth weight was about three pounds um, and of course the baby was, had complications and was in the hospital for a couple of months. Um, that young girl had no support, her mother, she lost her mother um, when she was a teenager, her dad was an alcoholic, wasn't involved helping and the um, partner was violent basically. Um, so in the second pregnancy, again, the same, same issues were happening. She wasn't attending any of the appointments. The health visitor didn't, didn't know what to do. We were now there. Um, she was there as us, And the girls started. We buddied her up with other volunteers. And I think it was that initial sort of, the cat is a bit of, you know, I'm getting free transport. I'm getting somebody to take me to these appointments. But actually, it was then grew more because actually the volunteer showed an interest, helped her, got her engaged with toddlers and such for a lot of people um, and it was, you know, I'm not saying it was definitely not all of us, it was a, a, a partnership that made an impact on, on that on that girl and the family. Our second pregnancy was totally different, the baby was more than double the weight on these in the right sort of time of being born. Um, and she um, and after the first pregnancy she went on to antidepressants tablets after the baby was born and she chose I actually did the evaluation of her after the second baby and she chose and she actually had the confidence to actually say no to that the presence the second time and she felt that she could cope more um, although she was still really vulnerable, you know, so um, but she was better connected, she was getting 
support from all the different agencies and it's kind of like catalysted to make that happen. I said any questions? Let's start with that. Where should we work in? Um, in the last two years since the lottery, I've been funding this. We've had six to seven families. Um, and although in the, in the pilot, the, the, the mother was probably in the pilot, or she was, we didn't ever exclude any of the grandparents or, or, or fathers. Definitely, the mother has been as now spoken to all. So, almost six to seven families, that could be double the numbers, plus we are working with, with grandparents as well. So, you know, it's about sort of working with the whole family unit and, and support with all of them to develop and to become more engaged and, and such. It sounds like a lot of projects like you're doing some amazing stuff. In the longer term though, as part of the the collaborative and self lecture, have you got time and have you thought of ways of taking your learning out to other services? Yeah, we have. I mean, obviously, you know, the peer support group which leads into the, the volunteers, the volunteers and, and the steering group and then the steering group are obviously agencies connected. Um, our manager, we, we do lots of reports. We, um, we've had other agencies come down to, to, so we have been out there promoting the good work and what's going on. And yeah, that would be kind of our, our goal is actually not to have it just a rural self action and, and take it wider. Um, you know, it's sustainable in a way that it's volunteer. You know, so the volunteers are delivering everything. They do all the group work, and when I say the group work, um, we have on average sort of five or six different activities, group work activities a week for the families to come to. Now that's really quite challenging when you've got families travelling 30 miles to come to, to, to one group, and if you're doing that for one group, there's 10 families coming to a group. That's a lot of work. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I wonder whether what you're doing is, is spreading, in other words, are other, are other services coming, getting involved, learning from you and, then, and helping to. Absolutely, yeah, the opportunity is about sharing, so we've we'll been in national conferences and sharing the, the good practice. And, um, it's a more sustainable, you know, if we were to have paid workers supporting all of these you know, families, and you know, that would be sustainable, but we're asking to develop the worker at the core of it, but then all these volunteers are doing you know, connecting and, and such, it makes a huge difference. So every opportunity we're trying to tell people about it, hence we're telling you. <laughs> the volunteers are amazing, I have to say. And there's a whole range of volunteers. We have got volunteers, you know, who have worked all their life. We've, um, we've got retired midwives. We've got people who have been, who have done professional jobs. We have families, we have volunteers, sorry, who have never worked in their life. Um, and have had chaotic lifestyles and that whole that you know we're just talking about the third generation and such, you know, but they're 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 making small steps and changes and they've turned around and, and they just want to share that with, with other families in the community. They want to have an impact in our community, they really care about the community. Um, and for a few of that type of family Absolutely, there are potentials, yeah, definitely. And the hope is that every, everybody that we work with will, 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 when they're ready for that next stage of volunteer, then that would be definitely, you know, a focus for us too. And it might not be volunteering with us, you know, and that's what I think that's important is that we're not precious and keeping people. It's definitely about networking, signposting, and finding out what that individual, what their passion is. And, and then, you know, so if you're working with a family, and, you know, for instance, if you're, you're, you're concentrating on the parents and skills and health just now, but if their passion is about their dogs and such as well, then it's about sort of linking them into, you know, the dogs trust or something, so, so that we can take their skills and their assets to, to, to the area they want, you know.